Oh, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today we're gonna talk about sales funnels. That's part two of my video talking about marketing funnels. Now this marketing funnel and sales funnel content will be some of the most important content on this channel when it comes to you building an effective strategy for whatever you wanna sell. But of course, often we're talking about music and the merch and all them other artist related things. So you really wanna show this and share this with your team when y'all are trying to build out a strategy. But anyway, let's hop into it. All right, of course, in that first video, I showed you guys the marketing funnel. And as I said, here is a sales funnel. There's some slight differences. I'm just gonna knock out sales funnels and then we're gonna run into the nuances later. So just follow. Sales funnels, you have lead generation, lead qualification, selling, and then CRM. You'll find multiple versions of a sales funnel across online, but I think this is the simplest one to start off with, right? So lead generation means you are finding people who could possibly be customers. You're trying to start identifying potential customers. Lead qualification means out of those people that you got in contact with, that you made aware of you, you're trying to qualify which one of these folks are actually the type of people you want to sell to or could sell to. So let me backpedal a little bit. When we talk lead generation, there's two types, outbound and inbound activity. I'll get into the inbound later, but let's pretend that we're making a sales call. You know, those people who you have no idea who they are, they hit you up on the phone, those cold calls. Well, that's somebody doing outbound lead generation. They're going out, putting effort in to finding customers. And then throughout those conversations, typically they're trying to qualify these people. So when we talk about qualification and seeing if you're able to be sold to, every single product isn't for every single person. Let's just go to the extreme and say, I'm selling something that's for senior citizens and I'm call you up. I have no idea how old you are. And I'm asking you questions on the phone to see if you're over 65 years old or whatever the senior citizen age is. If I ask questions and find out you're under the senior citizen age, then I now know you are not qualified to buy whatever I am trying to sell. Or maybe I might try to finesse the situation and see if you have a grandma or grandpa that I can get in contact with. But that's how lead qualification works. And then, of course, selling, that's the actual sale and exchange of the product. Then you have customer relationship management. Now, in this phase, you manage the relationship of the customers that you now have. You, and you, can, you can also keep it going with just a quality product experience. Customer expectations must be met or exceeded if you want to keep these people to be your customers and start creating loyalty. So now let's compare the marketing and sales funnel and then we'll hop right into the specifics of what that might look like for an artist with their music or just brand in general. One, if you look at this marketing and sales funnel side by side, you remember from the marketing funnel video, you go through awareness, consideration, conversion, loyalty, and advocacy. So basically this is this entire process of let's say a fan discovers you. They start to like your music. They start to listen to more music after those first few songs they discover. And now they get in with your brand. Now they become loyal to you. And then they keep this cycle going because they start telling more people about your music. All right. This is a very much so a content based thing. If we want to keep it super service level of the marketing funnel, particularly for a musician, they're discovering your music. They're discovering your brand. They're consuming your brand and then they're spreading your brand. Now, when we look at the lead generation, lead qualification section of the sales funnel, you would actually cut this off as an artist because for the most part, your lead generation and qualification will be taking place in your marketing funnel. So that's them discovering your music. That's them um, discovering your brand, consuming your brand, because as you notice, there are no sales in the conservative marketing funnel. You then combine these as an artist because this is how these work together. Sales and marketing go hand in hand. At the top, there's the marketing funnel and then it leads right into sales, particularly for you as an artist. There are different ways people might try to flip this, but let's do this traditionally for how it will probably look for an artist. You have your awareness, fan creation, and now there's this loyalty of your fan base and now you start to sell things. You don't necessarily have to sell things to only fans. 
right? Concert sales and people going to your show can actually be a part of what helps them turn into a fan or even a loyal fan. But for the most part, what you'll have is these people going through this funnel of becoming fans and now you don't worry about the rest of the sales funnel. Now that they're fans of your brand, when you create products to be available, they just sell to your fan base. You're not trying to qualify leads or look for le um, leads at that time. You are simply just trying to sell for to your fan base because they're already qualified as your fan base. You don't need to try to go waste all the effort selling to new people, making them aware of you and all that stuff. So what that looks like when we talk about outbound marketing earlier, you now have inbound marketing. Inbound marketing is the fact that as an artist, you're creating all this content. You put stuff out there. You can go to the marketing funnel um, video to get you know more attuned to that if you have not watched that video. But once you have that inbound marketing, people are self-selecting into your process. They're self-selecting into your funnel because they say, hey, I became aware of this artist. I like their song or I like their interview. Let me look out for more of them. Let me go deeper and deeper into their funnel. When you have that outbound stuff, once again, you're putting the effort in. You're going out. So just imagine if, once again, you had to call somebody out of the blue or you're trying to go door to door or whatever. You're getting in people's face, maybe creating some kind of ad or something like that. That's outbound. Now, the difference is, think about Pizza Hut, Papa John's, whatever pizza place you like to go to. Have you ever called them for a pizza? Have you ever just walked into their doors looking for a pizza? That's inbound. They didn't ask you to come there. You got your craving, you decided, and you came already ready to buy. And that's what you're priming your fan base for when you're building that trust in their brand and they're deciding that they really like you. Now, lastly, there is a marketing funnel sales funnel combination where you would still use the lead generation and lead qualification portion of the sales funnel, even though you already have a fan base. Now, take it back. Once again, you already created fans and we're down to the loyalty standpoint. These are your fans that you have. But now let's just say you have a product that all of your fan base might not necessarily be able to afford or all of your fan base might ne necessarily be in the right area so some portion of the lead generation could be saying hey i'm doing a concert that's in la or i'm just doing my tour so you're trying to make sure fans in a specific area as you go throughout tour are aware of what you have going on so they can then decide to buy your product. So now you're targeting specific people within your fan base. If you think about Ryan Leslie, if you look at the Ryan Leslie video I did, he used Superphone, his app that a lot of you guys already know about. Check it out if you don't. But he is basically able to filter throughout his fan base and you can see which levels of fans that he has. And once a year, he has this private party where he's targeting specific fans that spent a certain amount of money on him, that had certain behaviors. I don't know all of the things that he chooses to target these fans, but he chooses them because they'll be more likely to buy. And he wants to show some sort of thanks as well. But you can also tell who would be more likely to buy and who's worth targeting in your fan base based on specific behaviors. Just like, once again, if I had a concert in LA, my LA fans would be more likely to buy than my New York fans. Very simple. Let's keep it at that level, but it applies to a lot of different situations. So once again, there's the sales funnel, then there's the combination of the marketing and sales funnel that you'll be using often once you start to create those fans. So a lot of you guys are in the process where y'all are focusing on this marketing funnel. And then the combination will be, hey, then I'm trying to sell to them because I have fans. And then you also have that combination, last but not least, when you have these fans, but you have specific experiences they might be exclusive in whatever way they are that you want to target to specific people within your fan base there are a lot of different tools to do that and some people hey they just post it on instagram and hope the right fans find out about it but either way it goes take this in people because this is very important in how you view your fan base creation it'll become more and more important as you get more and more fans. I know some people are at the very beginning. Y'all need to solely be focused on that marketing funnel, period. Now, some people are further along. Y'all have certain levels of fan bases. 
y'all could really start to take some of these things in and as your fan base grows you might want to reference this video and the marketing funnel video back again and again just to make sure you're thinking and utilizing and maximizing what you get from your fan base all right now that's my spiel on marketing and sales funnels now of course there are a lot of nuances you can get more specific on each and every layer you should do that research on your own if you want to know but other than that ask some questions you know in the comments below we like to answer and discuss questions i would like to know what you guys think and last but not least if you like this video go ahead hit that like button if you like it you might as well share it and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe